my fearless friends, another amazing episode. And it is the last one in a long series. And this makes me so emotional because it's not only the end of a series, but I have a Romanian with me and she lives in Cyprus. But it's simply amazing to pronounce the name of a Romanian that I was so impressed seeing her post on Instagram about relationships. And my amazing guest for today, Diana Stangaciu. And again, oh my God, it feels amazing to pronounce a Romanian name on my podcast, Stories About Fear, because even if I've had a few Romanian guests throughout almost three years now, it's still really amazing to see that the impact of Romania just goes beyond the national borders. And as I told you, I saw Diana in a post on Instagram. And I have to say, I love social media. I'm everywhere on social media. And it just brings us together because what were the chances otherwise to meet such an amazing, powerful lady? And she just said that she's not a feminist. However, she's really powerful. She's strong. She knows what she wants. And she helps women overcome breakups and more because she's a well-being coach. A bit about Diana from her biography, which impressed me today. I was looking for a title for this episode and I came up with focus on you. Plain and simple because when it comes to relationships, you need to be selfish and I can't wait to get Diana's insights on this because if you don't put yourself first, my fearless friend, no one else will. Now, a bit about her amazing work. She's in Cyprus, as I said, and as she wanted to have a feminine presence in her life to help her guide her through all of the changes, the breakups, and through life overall, she didn't have this presence because she had to witness her parents' divorce, which was quite a trauma for her. She says that I read Be the Change You Want to See in the World a long time ago. At that time, I wish I had seen more women happy with themselves, starting with my mother. Women who love each other, who understand each other better, and who have an inner world like in fairy tales, being aware that they cannot control the outside world. I chose to change and be this woman so that later I could help other women too. Oh my God, this still gets me so emotional and welcome, Diana. It's such a privilege to have you here with us today. Hello, Roxana. Nice to be here. And uh, I'm, glad that you, uh, I'm glad that you invited me. So really, really happy to be here. And also, it's nice to pronounce your name, Roxana. <laughs> Roxana. <laughs> yeah, it does feel really <laughs> nice to have Romanians just talking, being out there and being visible because I so much appreciate your work, Diana. And I don't remember the exact words from your post. I think it was about two months ago on Instagram, the one that attracted my attention towards you. But when I read it, my mind was, oh, yeah, this is an amazing reminder. I forgot about that. So can you please start, Diana, by telling us what's your story and how did you get to be a well-being coach? Well, I think in the first place, I didn't realize, the, um, I didn't choose to be a life coach. I think life coach um, chose me to be. So uh, I think my, uh, uh, my trip started like nine or 10 years ago when I moved from Romania. And uh, I was all alone in another country with no family, no friends, no boyfriend, no husband, no dog, no cat, no nothing. So um, I remember that I was in a big depression at that time. 
And um, that was the moment that was really, really sad. And I was really, really depressed. And I think I needed that moment to make a change in my life. And I think I needed that moment to do something with my life. And uh, I think that was the moment when first time I um, understood that fear is there to save me. And uh, so it happened. And um, after many years, I realized that uh, nine years ago when I was in that big depression, I remember that I was kind of imagining myself like in a big hole that was very muddy, full of mud and very slippery. and. Um, I could feel the more I was going down, I could feel that um, I was realizing that if I'm getting deeper and deeper, nobody will uh, get me out from there because there was no one. So I was so afraid. I was so, so afraid to not get deeper in that hole. And uh, who knows how uh, I could end it. Uh, I realized that I have to do anything that stays in my power to get out of it. So I did everything I could. I start to read, I start to listen to podcasts, I, I start to focus on myself. I even start gym that time. And um, easy, easy. It wasn't, it wasn't very easy, but I think in one or two years, I start to get out of it. And um, I think, after two or three years from that moment, I realized that fear saved me. And uh, I said, okay, if fear, if that fear saved me, that means he's my friend, he's there to protect me. So I think I have a very good relationship with, <laughs> with the fear. So uh, I can say, okay, I'm nervous sometimes when I'm in a situation, but I know that this fear is there to protect me. So I'm not fighting with it. I mean, I'm just, hey, you are here. I know that you are here. You are here to protect me, but we are fine. We are having a good relationship and we are okay. Because as I told you, uh, fear was uh, that thing that saved my life in that moment nine years ago. Wow, I so appreciate you saying this, Diana, because the natural tendency, we usually want to fight fear, we want to resist it, stay away, don't come close to me, because it's not fun when you want to do things and you feel powerless. So I wanted to ask you, what would you say is the most valuable lesson ever that you could share with someone that's maybe at the beginning of their entrepreneurial journey? They want to do a lot, but they simply can't. What's a great lesson that you got? Oh. From <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> that was really funny because what I noticed also to my colleagues and my friends and you know, people that they want to start this, um, this path of um, life coaching and they have to expose themselves on uh, social media is uh, I am afraid what people could say. <laughs> I am afraid what my mother or what my, I don't know, my friends or what uh, my neighbor could say. And I remember that I was a little bit in this kind of situation because um, I start my uh, Instagram page uh, on, in uh, English. So I said, okay, listen, no matter what you do in this life, I mean, no matter what you do in this life, there, are, there, there will always be someone that will complain and say something, judge you, or uh, someone will be to not like you or somebody. Because, you know, I had this, um, I remember that I have uh, this picture in mind. I don't know if you know it, but it's quite um, popular on the internet, where um, it's a mule. So it's like a big picture, yeah? And four little pictures in a picture, something like this, with a mule, the father and uh, the daughter. And the first case was like uh, the father and the daughter were walking um, uh, behind, uh, behind the, the mule and the people were saying, oh my God, these two stupid people, uh, they have a mule and they walk. <laughs> the second picture was the daughter was on the mule, the father was next to you. Oh my God, um, this daughter has no respect for his uh, parent, for, for her parent. 
The third word was um, the the daughter was on the mule and the father was no, it was exactly the other way. No, so the father was on the mule. The uh, the daughter was uh, next to it and said, "Oh my God, uh, this guy has um, no emotions for uh, his daughter." And the fourth uh, picture was uh, both of them was on the mule. So people were saying, oh my God, poor mule. They have no mercy for him. <laughs> so no matter what are you doing, I mean, no matter what are you doing, there will always be someone to judge you or to say something bad or to not like you or whatever. So do whatever you like and this is it. And have no fear and you know you know and the other thing that i was thinking a few days ago and i think i was talking even with you is better to to step and uh, face the situation if, even if you are afraid now than to have regrets after one year because i think the regrets after one year are much more worse than the fear that we have today so I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and of course, I was nervous in the beginning, <laughs> but what can happen? Of course, I had a few haters, but uh, that's okay. That's fine. That's totally I fine. love it. Wow, this is amazing. And you said the magical word, haters. Now, when you have haters, you know that if people comment something that's negative, it means that they're doing less than you because otherwise they wouldn't have time to complain about other people's activities. They surely do less than you and they talk about themselves. So this means exactly. that you triggered them. It means that your content was that good. It was that good, that intriguing and challenging for them that you had them thinking, oh my God, even if it's a negative emotion, you moved them. So that's congratulations to you. This is a big step yeah. <laughs> because when you don't have people saying anything, you're not making any changes, really. Everyone's agreeing with you or maybe they just don't care. So you know that negative publicity is uh, far yeah, better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> And I wanted to ask you, as a Romanian moving to Cyprus, you are now, you're basically very adjusted to Cyprus in all ways after 10 years. But if there's someone that's listening to us, maybe they are starting a business in a foreign country. What would you say that the first thing they should focus on should be just so that they can get acquainted to everything that's going on in a foreign place? Well, obviously, in the beginning, um, I didn't have in mind to start a business here, but um, you have to be a little bit resilient. You have to adapt. So um, even um, resilience, you can um, train. So if you have this resilience, you can start a business, I think, mostly anywhere in the world. And you know what? I was even thinking people that usually are complaining about the place, they are complaining no matter where they live. They live in Romania, Cyprus, uh, USA, or wherever they live. They will always complain. It's not about the country. It's about you. So even I was in Cyprus or I was in Romania or in, in any other country, I think I would have that thing. So it's not, it's not about the strategy or about the laws. It's, it's about mostly your mindset. I love that. Because I think mostly... 20%, 20% is about strategy and 80% is about uh, our mindset. That makes so much sense because, yeah, you're right. It all starts from us. So, you know, about my title that I was telling you earlier, focus on you. What do you think, Diana? How important is it for us women to focus on ourselves first more than anything and anyone? Well, yeah, obviously it's really important and that changed me. What, as I told you like um, 10 minutes ago, um, when I start to focus on myself and start to love myself was nine years ago because I was so empty inside. So 
I didn't I didn't love myself. So I didn't had uh, I didn't had anyone around me to receive love. So it was as I said, no one was there. So I was empty. No one to offer me love. So I had to feel myself. I had no choice. So that was the moment when I started to love myself. But you know what I noticed, Roxana? I, mean, I kind of feel um, sorry for some women because I, I, um, I had a client a few days ago. And um, many women, they kind of misunderstand this concept of love yourself and put yourself um, on the first place. Because you know what happens? If you cross that limit and you don't keep the balance between loving yourself and love the others, you might uh, get on the other side. You know how it is like riding a bicycle, yeah? So our mind, what, whether you go on the left or too much on the right, you will fall, yeah? So it's okay, love yourself. It's really, really important to love yourself. But also do not ignore the other's needs, yeah? So because when you put yourself always, love yourself, okay? That's okay, love yourself is amazing. But don't neglect, don't neglect the others' needs also. Because you know what happens when you start to love yourself too much, you start to be uh, uh, egocentric. Uh, I said it right, yeah. And uh, then you start to have problems in your life, maybe professional life, in your personal life. So that's not good at all. So yeah, that's a problem. Yes, I truly agree with that. Love yourself first is really important. But don't go to, don't be too extreme. Don't go on the other side. You, know? you have to keep that balance because you don't keep the balance. And if you don't, we don't keep the balance in almost anything in our life, like fear, yeah. Uh, then we might fall. Either you go left or right, you will fall. You have to keep it like this. So it's exactly like this. I can relate to that because I am a recovering narcissist. And I've been a narcissist for many, many years until not very long ago when I realized that I don't need to hurt people to feel okay. This yeah. was a really big trauma. And as I had body dysmorphia, oh my God, this is a talk for another time. <laughs> <But just long-term laughs> we need another two hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but long story short, you're right about balance. And I wanted to ask you, what do you do, Diana, to keep yourself in, in a balance as much as possible? Because I know you can never have it perfect. But is there anything that you do specifically that makes you feel that things are okay? Yeah, I think about I'm the kind of well, person that uh, likes the situations where there is a win-win situation. So, okay, I'm happy. You have to be happy. I'm okay. You are okay. So the moment that when we have to make a decision or uh, when we have to get a conclusion or to do something, is that decision when, uh, as I was reading somewhere, we are both happy in the same time and we are both unhappy in the same time. And uh, to understand me better, and I will give you an example. For example, um, you have some classes, yes, and your husband is asking, hey, come on, come, come with me to this uh, uh, my company is giving a party and uh, I want you to be there. It's, it means a lot to me. Yeah. And you say, oh, well, you, you say, okay, I love myself and I have to, uh, I'm really important in my life and I have to be to my classes. Yeah. So imagine you, you are neglecting his needs. Yeah. So you put yourself first. But the situation is, is that moment when, okay, I see what I can do. I see maybe I can go 30 minutes uh, earlier from my classes and I'll be to your party too, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's that moment when they are both happy and both unhappy, unsatisfied at the same time. So yes, mm -hmm. to me, my classes are important. To him, uh, it's important that party and me to be there. And that's the middle way, the middle ground. And again, it's the balance. <laughs> it's the win-win situation, yeah. Okay, he's not. He's happy that you'll be there. You're happy that you still got your half an hour of your classes. 
and he's not very happy that you missed half of the party or one hour from the party and you're not happy that uh, you missed half an hour of your classes. So uh, that's the balance. That's the win-win situation. Wow. Diana, I have to say I've not heard that before anywhere. I love it. This just makes so much sense. <laughs> and it's about compromising. And yes, relationships are hard. Can you please talk to us a bit about your business and how you help women to overcome breakups? What's uh, the secret sauce, if there's any? Well, I get a message yesterday. I was kind of accused of uh, that I encourage women to be, um, to live alone and to enjoy their, uh, uh, their uh, lonely loneliness. But I'm not like this, and sometimes maybe I'm not very specific in my uh, videos, but I don't encourage women to be alone. And it's true, it's true you need to have this power of yourself. But the thing is that when you get out from a relationship, you have to clean yourself. It's like, because what I notice mostly, women or even men, they, they hurry to get in another relationship after a breakup. And you know how it is, uh, Roxana, how is this? It's like you are full of dust and mud, yeah? You are dirty. And you want to get in a new house. It's not fair. So that's why I'm trying to work with women on this stage. When after they break up and to be ready to get in a relationship, yeah? So clean yourself and then after you clean yourself and you um, heal your wounds and do your process, then yes, you can get like, okay, maybe you're not <laughs> the cleanest in your life. I mean, we have to work with ourselves like years, but when you're, what, when you're feeling ready and you don't, don't come with um, a heavy baggage from your uh, ex-relationship, yes, then you are ready to go in your next, next uh, relationship. So that's the stage I'm working with women, like between the relationships. And no, I don't encourage women to be alone. I know that it's not really easy to be alone. And uh, I don't think, well, maybe women are saying, oh, I, I better be alone than, being, than, than feeling alone in a relationship. But deep down in our heart, I don't think anyone wants to be alone all his life or her life. Other way you'll be a monk or a nun. <laughs> I mean, deep down in our heart, we all want to be with someone, but we have to be functional to get in a functional relationship. If you're not functional, then if you get with someone that is functional, maybe you have to have, you might have an impact on that person. So it's like coming dirty, with dirty shoes in someone's house. It's not fair. Clean your shoes first. This is common sense, yeah? Before, when you get out from relationship, in your shoes and then when you're already getting out of the house. So I think that's common sense. Wow, what a brilliant metaphor. It just makes so much sense. Now I have a billion questions, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? This is amazing. And oh my God, when someone that is willing to clean their shoes, they're starting this amazing process what is the first thing that they need to do exactly so that they know that they maybe get ready to enter a relationship? How do you, how do they know that they're healing? First of all, you know, when, if you're thinking, for example, about something, about a moment or about a person, yeah, and you still might want to cry or you might have hard feelings for that person, yeah? Mm. That means you're not healed. Because I remember this when um, I worked with myself about my, uh, with my father trauma. Every time when I was mentioning that moment when I was abused by, by my father, I was having this pain here, you know, I wanted to cry. I was feeling really sad all the time. But then when I healed myself, I realized I could speak about those moments without any tears and without any problem. 
So that's the moment when you start, when you when you realize that you are here. Yeah. Wow. When you are talking about, you don't feel any kind of emotions. I mean, okay, he was or she was my ex and that's it. He's in my past and I don't have any hard feelings or I don't feel any pain or I don't feel any regrets or hard feelings or anything. You are like kind of neutral. I think that moment is the moment when you when you are ready to step in the next relationship. And do you think that people need to get the lesson from what happened? Do they need to maybe journal or maybe can you give a tip to the women and the men that are going through this, that are listening to this conversation? Well, obviously, you know, this process of healing, I like to say it's like a diet. Yeah. So if I'm saying to you that you have to do journaling, you have to do um, meditation, you have to do um, uh, to use NLP uh, tools or exercise, you have to do this. It might not be appropriate for you because, for example, it's like with all the diets. Yeah. What diet is working for you, it might not work for the other person. So it's not a specific. It's not a specific process of healing. It might be a combination of this and that and that so it's like not even with me not everyone is uh, some some girls they had the great uh, results some they didn't so it's exactly with the diet so every process of healing is unique in, in its own wow i love it so you need to basically tailor the situation because we are obviously so different and what works for you doesn't work for me and you know I was thinking now oh my god I've not healed for from some of the relationships in my past because when I think about them I still have hard feelings so I need to see what's going on there (laughs) because you know as a fear specialist I kind of left some relationships behind so I need to see what's theirs. I so much appreciate you saying that. And I wanted to ask you, what inspires you on a daily basis so that you are so good at what you do? Well, you know, I have a saying. I have a saying and um, I think I made it nine years ago. Before I start to read, uh, I like to know these people. And um, I always like to say that the most interesting books I have uh, ever read are people. And um, I learned a lot from people. And even nowadays, when I, even when I scroll Facebook or Instagram or uh, I listen stories, <laughs> or even sometimes <laughs> if I'm going to a coffee shop and I hear uh, two women talking, you know, people around us inspire, inspire us. So it's like this, when you, even when you read a book, you read, actually you read someone, imagination, someone's uh, theory, someone's um, life and so on. Yeah. But it's much more interesting when you read a person, if you can do it, but even if you're not a good reader, you just listen, but you have to listen, to actively listen. So when you listen to people, then yes, you get inspired. And, um, you know, I, I learned from people even they were the not good uh, examples. And uh, it's like, like this, yes, and like this, uh, not. <laughs> and we have to learn from everyone. I mean, from everyone, we have to learn from everyone. I enjoy that so much. And I see that your bag is full of metaphors for today. Yeah, just I, I still, wonderful. but you know, oh. yes, but you know why, why, why uh, it happened this, I, I still remember a few years ago, I was working in a hotel and I was having a blackboard and was empty and sad and said, okay, let's, um, let's uh, have some fun and uh, write some riddles for kids. And I was writing down two riddles, one that was really, really, um, was complicated, it was, was a little bit harder, and one easy, you know, for adults and for kids. And what surprised me was that <laughs> when the adults were giving the answer, were like, oh my God, 
from where did you get this answer? I mean, there were so complicated answers and there was something like you, you don't want to imagine. I said, from where did you get that? I mean, how did you get there? And the kids were like, boom, straight like this. And I was, oh my. And what I learned from this is like, okay, I have to fix my problems with the mind of a kid of seven, eight years old. I mean, I don't know if you know, it's a, it's a funny little kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And think, don't complicate things because we adults, we tend to complicate it. So keep it simple, keep it simple. So that's why I'm trying when I'm trying to fix a complicated situation that is in my head, I'm trying to use metaphors and I'm trying to make analogy to understand the situation better and how can I fix it? Because we know how to fix the simple stuff, but we don't know how to fix the complicated, the complicated stuff. So I'm trying to put them in, <laughs> in simple stuff to understand them better, to see them and to see what, uh, what the solution is. And even I was thinking about this, you know, for example, you are afraid, you are a swimmer. You can say that I'm a swimmer. I'm kind of, you know, I don't want to be in water that's deeper than my height. So I'm in between. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First time to swim. Okay. And let's imagine you are, a, you are on a rock, on a rock, very high, yeah? and you want to jump. Would you be afraid? Um, I, I would say no, I, I wouldn't, I mean, my common sense would say, no, don't jump. And I wouldn't jump for the world. I wouldn't jump. Okay, <laughs> but you have to jump. Let's say, let's say that you have to jump. Yeah. It's a situation that you have to fix it. Okay. So you are uh, on a rock that is very high and you have to jump in the water. Yeah. So you are afraid. Yeah. I'm 100% yeah. afraid. afraid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what would you do? I would assess and see which is worst, staying there mm -hmm. or <laughs> jumping in the water because I would, I think I would need a few seconds to just get in my rational mind and think, okay, mm -hmm. if it's worse, if I jump, I'm going to stay there. But if it's worse, if I'm there, I'm going to jump. So okay. depending on the situation, maybe I would need to jump, I would jump. I mean, if it's the best solution from the worst case okay. scenario. And what, what a kid will do? Oh my God, a kid, um, a kid, a kid would maybe jump. Yeah, probably would sure. have more courage. Yeah, yeah. But probably he would put some, uh, you know, uh, the protectors to, um, yeah. uh, they will put a helmet maybe. Yeah, and they will put some, um, some saving, um, or something like this so they will they will try to prevent yeah they will try to protect and prevent and to have less fear to jump and when they will feel ready they will jump so when we are afraid of something yes i'm afraid of to do this and that yeah so we i have to get ready before jumping in that situation and what I have to do, I have to do this, this, and that. And then, yes, maybe you'll still be afraid, but you'll not be so afraid when you're getting ready. It's like going to exam. If you're going to an exam, it, you know that you are not, uh, you didn't learn or you didn't do anything for it. Yeah, of course you're afraid. But the more you learn and you're getting ready for the exam, the less fear you have. So, yes, it's normal to have fear. It's protecting us, yeah. But because you have so much fear, you start to learn. <laughs> and yeah. the moment you start to learn, you'll have less and less fear. So that's that's a situation. That's a, this is I don't say I, I'm still afraid of things, you know. But I'm trying to if I'm trying to get in a situation and that I'm afraid of, I'm trying to get you know prepared and to get ready, and the the fear is going to surface. And I, I would like to say something. I was watching TV and there um, was a car accident. And the first question that uh, came to my mind was like, oh my God, this guy doesn't have any fear. 
So the conclusion was that we should be more afraid if we wouldn't be afraid. Wow. Because imagine if you wouldn't be afraid to run 160 miles an hour on the highway. You'll jump from the balcony. You'll do crazy stuff. You put yourself in danger. So that's why when, when people are saying, I don't want to be afraid anymore. I don't want to feel fear. No. You should be more afraid if you wouldn't be afraid. So yes, fear is there to protect us. And we have to keep it also. We have to make it like our companions. Okay, <laughs> my friend, you are here. <laughs> I know you are here to protect me, but now I'm taking my co coat of, uh, of the adult. And okay, let's do what we have to do. Wow. I have got to say, wow. I'm just loving this so much. Because indeed, we need to embrace all of us. Our emotions, as you said, come with a message. We need to see what's happening there because it's growth at its finest. And when we don't feel fear, it means that nothing's happening. We're not growing. And let's face it, when things are great and when we're successful, we don't learn too much. We just yeah, enjoy the from the comfort zone exactly no? exactly i mean it's nice it's great to have success and everything but if you don't put yourself in some sort of a challenge maybe not on a regular but as often as possible you'll be there you'll be there just going down unfortunately we're not growing if we're not doing something that pushes us that pushes our limits yeah this is uh, just brilliant I was reading somewhere that was uh, kind of funny. And first time when I read it, I was like, what? <laughs> but somebody was saying, wish to have more problems than usual. You wish to have more challenges than usual. Because that's the moment when we grow, when we are challenged. We don't grow from the comfort zone. So, yeah. I mean, I know the moment itself is kind of painful. <laughs> I know I've been there. I mean, we are all there in, in a moment or in another word. That's the moment when you grow. You need, you need that moment of challenging, that challenging moment, because that moment will uh, make you grow. And we all have them. Wow. 100%. Oh my God, Diana, this is brilliant. I literally am going to take notes after we finish this conversation <laughs> because this is so good. And my fearless friends, please get a pen and a piece of paper and rewind everything. I mean, I really hope and I forgot to tell you, oh my God, get a pen and a piece of paper because Diana is having a masterclass for us on emotions, on fear, on dealing with life situations because it's tough as she said however when you put things down some magical things happen and you'll start to be more aware and please get in touch with Diana if you are struggling with just recovering and healing after a breakup because I know how tough it is and by the way Diana I wish I had met you like 20 years ago because I was jumping from one awful relationship to another I was just too afraid to be yeah. alone but Roxana you need it you needed all those breakups you need it I know it sounds crazy but you needed all those breakups because if you wouldn't if you wouldn't uh had all those breakups you wouldn't be the person you are today so yes sometimes I know it sounds crazy but we need all this problems or challenges or whatever whatever that you like how to say it i said but we need all this because we need to grow so if you didn't learn your lesson the universe or god or how you call it yeah is giving you another in, and another because you didn't learn your lesson <laughs> it's like a teacher yeah no i'm giving you the same lesson you didn't learn it i'm giving you the same lesson you didn't learn it the day you learn it then i will stop it exactly so, yes it's, the universe, how, how you want to call it, is giving you the same situation till you learn your lesson. 
Exactly. So that's why we are we are having because this is what happened to me. I was going, I I, I was uh, noticing that I was going in the same type of relationships. So well, they were quite similar, and I was feeling like a rat in a wheel, in that rat wheel. So I was going like this, and I said, "Okay, what's happening? It's not in you know what, because we look." We look first outside. Hey, what's what's wrong with, with the world around me? Yeah, what's wrong with these people? What's wrong with these men? And all the men are the same. And why they do this? And but you know, I have another thing. Before pointing, yeah, before pointing the finger on someone, be careful because you have another three fingers here. Yeah. So before pointing the finger on someone else. Be careful on those these three fingers. So look inside of me first before pointing the finger. Beautifully said, and you're you're so right because the exterior is just mirrored by what we have inside of us. It's nothing exactly. more, nothing less than us, just in a bigger picture, right? In a very exactly. big mirror. Yeah. yeah, and um, it's like you have like you know how it is. This is I was talking with a friend today because when somebody you know that you have a problem, but when somebody else is like a mirror to you and it's kind of showing you, it's like okay I know I have the pimple here, <laughs> but when somebody somebody else is coming and is saying to you and uh, is giving you the mirror, it's like oh wow yeah I have a pimple here. I mean now I am aware. I mean, till then you might, you know, well, okay, help. but now you are uh, full, fully aware of that. And once uh, you are fully aware, you start to work on it. Because this is 50% of the problem is solved uh, if you start to getting, if you start to get aware of the problem. Wow, beautifully said. Indeed, it's, everyone says that it's half solved. And I really believe that it's half solved because then, you really get to know why things have happened. So you can change, as you said, learn the lesson next time. So it doesn't happen all over again because exactly. God and or the universe. And yeah, we, we can call it anyway, is very stubborn in making sure <laughs> that we, like, you know, how is it like in school It's like in school. Yeah. You didn't pass your exam. No, you don't go in the next grade. Yeah. No, you didn't pass your exam. No, you don't in the, in the next grade. So this is it. You have to learn your lesson. Till you don't learn your lessons, you don't pass the exam and you don't go further in life. Yeah, exactly. Wow, my fearless friends, learn your lesson and have a talk with Diana because it's really tough otherwise. Because you may be too much with your head deep in the problem and you can't see and I want to tell our ladies the ones that are listening to us and watching us don't be afraid to ask for help you no, can't no. do it alone most of the times right you just can't do it alone you need someone that can pull you up and show you a different picture most of the times it just takes maybe a two millimeter change of your direction you can see things completely different if you just move slightly and this is what someone like diana or diana, diana. <laughs> can help you with by the way diana how can our listeners get in touch with you where can they find you and your amazing work well they can find me on instagram 40s is fab because really 40s is fab i mean we have a little bit of everything i like to say that we have we still have energy time money a little bit of wisdom <laughs> a little bit more <laughs> and uh, yes 40s is fabulous and um it's not late for us to um, heal it's not late for us to start a new relationship to start a new marriage if you want kids i mean 40s is really, really amazing, but you just have to work with yourself and see the, the, the other side of the situation. And it's like you said, you know, most of us, we think that we can fix ourselves, um, our problems. And I was the same. 
I have to I have to confess that I was the same, but it took me, I don't know, it took me lots of years to fix this problem that I had. Till I, till I didn't see a therapist and life coach, I realized that I worked with myself almost, you know, that was, the effort was huge. Yeah, the time was long. And in maybe in one year of therapy and life coaching, I had almost maybe three times the results better than in five years or something like this. And yes, it's really, really important to be vulnerable and accept, accept, uh, accept that, yes, we need help. And me, I need help and you and everyone needs help. And because, you know, one of the biggest coaches in the world, even him, he has other coaches. One hundred percent. I'm so happy you said that because it just shortens the pain. Why go through pain a year when someone like you, Diana, can help people maybe in a week or in less? It depends where everyone's on their journey. But why put yourself through such a burden and so much pain just because you may have your ego saying no? You can do it on your own. It's not that you can't. Yes, you can, as Diana just said, but it just takes longer. So yes, leave, leave it to a specialist to help you. You know, you know what is also painful because what I see, and I don't know, I can't do much about it, but people many times prefer to pay with time instead of money of consulting a therapist or like or life coaching. But you know what is a problem? Money, you can make them anyway, anytime. But your time, you can make it back. So what do you prefer? In, in any other way, so either you pay with your time, with your years from your life, either you pay with money. Yeah. So I always say, okay, if I, if I can learn something and I, if I can heal faster, and if I can do something faster, I'd rather prefer to pay with money than with time than to learn on my on my own. Because time is going like this. And uh, no, I'm not willing to lose my time learning everything by myself. <laughs> I you really are know. so right. You are so right. And I'm so happy you said that. It's not like now you're going to get to learn plumbing or engineering exactly. to build things exactly. yeah yeah because it's it's time is really priceless you just can't put a price tag on your time and it's time and it's really high time that we just ask for help and be vulnerable my fearless friends you know that your emotions need to get out so that you can get those great lessons and boy did we get some amazing lessons diana i am so grateful for this conversation it did not disappoint it even succeeded it over succeeded every expectations that I had because you are simply so to the point direct and I love it and you know your stuff so my fearless friends 40s is fab go to Instagram you can see all of Diana's amazing videos and posts and get in touch with her have a talk with her and see how she can help you move to the next stage in your life and why not thrive it's the holidays have fun enjoy and Diana Thank you so much. You're it's an welcome. honor. It's a great honor to have you on. Thank you for this amazing wisdom. You're very welcome. You're very welcome.